Hi, my name is Sydney Hamilton. I'm an aerospace engineer and engineering manager at the Boeing Company. I am so excited to be here with you all and share my STEM journey. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to fly, literally. I would stand outside, feet next to each other, blanket tied around my neck, arms straight out, and once in the ready position, I would try to take off. Not once did my parents tell me that I couldn't fly. So it makes sense that I became an aerospace engineer. But the journey to becoming an aerospace engineer wasn't always easy. I can remember when I was in high school and I had a teacher sit me down and he asked me, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And I remember proudly saying, I'm gonna be an engineer. And he looked at me and said, isn't that gonna to be tough for someone like you? Immediately, I was deflated and I felt like I didn't know what to do. I was so sad and luckily I had another teacher who noticed and sat me down. She asked me why I'd been so sad and I told her the story about what the other teacher said to me. And she looked at me and said, since when do you listen to anyone? She's got a good point. It was a great reminder that this is my choice. So I get to choose what I want to do with my future. And that's what I want you to remember. It's your destiny, not theirs to decide. So don't let anyone tell you no. You know your passion, you move forward, and you will find the support along the way. And enjoy the journey. You don't have to have it all figured out. I know I don't. If there's anything I think everyone has learned is that things can change and that's okay. So enjoy the journey, explore, ask questions, and just remember, it's your destiny. And you got this. I believe in you. Where do you go when you want to go higher? See places and things and it never expires. A book can take you anywhere. Turn the pages and you'll be there. Come on, join us, you'll see. We're reading with Kevin Lee. Hi, friends, and thank you for joining me for another Read with Carolee, where we have authors from all around the world, or maybe even down your street, coming to share their books with you. I am your host, Carolee, and before we get into it, make sure you hit like, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell so that you do not miss a, a single author that we have coming to you every weekend. And today we have author Gwen Richardson. Miss Gwen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm excited about your book too. But before we get to your book, could you let us know where you're reading to us from? I am reading from Houston, Texas. Oh, yeah, yes. It's a great state, and, and Texas is big. So, <laughs> yes, everything yes. is big in Texas. Everything is big in Texas. Yes, <laughs> and you're talking about some big things in this book. Yeah. With it. I. I, I love it. I love it. I just, I love the title on a whole, but friends, when you read this book, you will be so inspired at the boss women who are a part of our lives today. These aren't women that are just, you know, past and gone. These are women that we have today and Black, beautiful women. And I'm so excited to bring this book for Black history and for our friends to hear more about this uh, these awesome women so miss gwen i'm not going to take up any more time i'm going to turn it over to you for you to read for us boss women okay so we're going to get started and these are seven the subhead is seven african-american women who built their businesses from the ground up and so you're going to meet some people, some of them you may know, some you may not know, but we're going to start with boss women. You've heard of moguls Oprah and Hughes, whose successes are shown 
on the evening news. But there are other women from near and far who are building their empires and raising the bar. From airplanes to houses to hygiene to hair, they treat their clients with the greatest of care. They're fearless, they're nimble, they're classy, they're dope, and give future generations immeasurable hope. Some started with nothing and went to the top. Others spent years to develop ideas and didn't stop. Education was key and shouldn't be dismissed. They learned all they could. They had to persist. They've all broken barriers in some form or other and made family proud, especially their mothers. There are thousands of boss women on this side of heaven, but on the pages that follow, you'll meet only seven. So the first boss woman that I talk about is Janice Adams. She's with GMA Solutions. So here's information about her. Her first, her first jobs were with two very large companies, General Motors and General Electric paid pretty good money, but layoffs and divorce could make her home life unstable. Janice Adams knew she had to put everything on the table. So she joined the armed forces at age 27. She selected the Air Force as her chosen profession. To raise her two children with the support of her mother, she rose th through the ranks up one tier, then another. After 24 years, she decided to retire, to work as a contractor. Her skills were for hire. Her vision led her to choose aviation and provide air traffic controllers for government locations. GMA Solutions has a host of federal clients. Her insistence on excellence has caused her to triumph and her list of awards is too long to name. She was even inducted into the DC Hall of Fame. So that's Janice Adams. Our next boss woman is Valerie Daniels Carter with V&J Holdings. One of the largest female franchisees that America has seen and is hard to believe, V&J Holdings was founded by Valerie. Her last name's Daniels Carter. She exudes vitality. Her restaurants sell burgers, coffee, pretzels, and pizza. Whatever you want, she's determined to feed you. Pizza Hut, Burger King, Captain D's, and more. After decades in business, she's seen her profits soar. But she doesn't limit herself to financial opportunities. She also gives back to her local community. Part owner of the Milwaukee Bucks, her share is minority. She's active in church and believes in philanthropy. She attributes her success to her faith in God. She offers this advice and it's not a facade. An attitude to win is what is required to accomplish your goals and achieve your desires. So that's um, Ms. Valerie Daniels Carter. And the next person is B. Dixon. She is with, she's founder of the Honey Pot Company. The concept for Honey Pot was revealed in a dream. Her ancestors spoke, heal thyself was their theme. For years, B had struggled with a recurring infection. She tried many different formulas, mixing them to perfection. It took $20,000 to get Honey Pot started. Brother Sai joined in and her new course was charted. She took 600 bottles to Atlanta for a hair show. Then Whole Foods called, her company started to grow. She added items like wipes and pads to her line. Soon they were in Target. Honey Pot was nationwide, but B has experienced her fair share of drama. 
folks throwing shade. They tried to cause trauma, but sisters all over flocked to B's side. They gave her support. They were bursting with pride because finally they had what every woman needs, feminine products that are safe, natural, and sulfate free. So our next boss woman is Janice Bryant Howroyd. She's with Act One Group. One of 11 children in Tarboro, North Carolina, her parents worked hard so their lives could be finer. Janice launched her business with a fax machine and a phone after her mother provided her with a $900 loan. The Act One group started in 1978. The company grew quickly with the aim to innovate in 22 countries competing with the best. One look at their talent pool and you'll be impressed. The Act One group provides employees, staffers, and talent with cutting edge human resources solutions that run the gamut. From utilities to energy to broadband to tech, with thousands employed, they continue to stretch. According to Forbes, Janice is worth several million, the first Black woman to run a company worth a billion. 17,000 clients all over the world, an incredible journey for a true Southern girl. So, our next boss woman is Garnetta Sanders of Netta Scientific. Family owned in Haynesport, New Jersey, nominated by Pfizer, who's, who considered them worthy. Garnetta's company was named Subcontractor of the Year. The Small Business Administration made that abundantly clear. The name of her firm is Netta Scientific. With husband Winfred by her side, their success has been terrific. Started in 1999, the end of a millennium, with attention to detail, keeping errors to a minimum. The company has superior lab supplies and solutions. An advancement came gradually. It was an evolution. With hubby as president and her as CEO, Netta Scientific expanded and continued to grow, offering innovation, quality, and a competitive price. Netta is nimble, efficient, accessible, and precise. With clients in pharma, biotech, and academia, it's no wonder they're often featured in the media. So our next boss woman is Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose Naturals. Janelle Stevens felt that it was her duty to bring gourmet products to the world of beauty. Her kitchen was where she brewed her first batches to develop a cure for her children's rashes. Their chronic eczema led her on a mission to use natural substances to remedy their condition. A vegan herself, her maxim was emphatic. If it goes on the body, one should be able to ingest it. Camille Rose Naturals was launched as a hobby, but the brand quickly grew. Janelle was featured in Ebony. The line includes products for both skin and hair. Moisture-rich ingredients developed with care. The products are homemade, vintage, and elegant. Almond milks, honey, and fruits that are relevant. Hydrating blends to sweeten your routine. Handcrafted with love so your hair stays pristine. So the final boss woman is J.C. Sykes of 90 Degree Construction. J.C. Sykes can wield a hammer, which is not often perceived as a symbol of glamor. She uses a wrench, a saw, and chisels. She works inside and outside, even when it drizzles. 
90 Degree Construction is the name of her firm, excelling in carpentry as her clients can confirm. Trimming, flooring, framing, and such. Their prices are reasonable. They don't charge too much. Though some tasks are daunting, JC doesn't squirm. Her nonprofit teaches girls that it's easy to earn the lifestyle they want if they master their skills. She named the organization Black Girls Build. JC and her family are determined to win and their business has thrived for years, nearly 10. A building's foundation is most important for sure. So the Sykes train their son, the future's secure. And I close with, so now you've read all about seven amazing women. Their success was hard fought. It was never a given. They overcame obstacles as they built their brands. Their products and services are in high demand. Two Janices, JC, Garnetta and B, plus Valerie and Janelle, their tenacity was the key. With humble beginnings, not ashamed to tell, They've risen to new heights, determined to excel. They are ordinary and special at the same time, which means you too can flourish, prosper, and climb. No matter your background or station in life, you can conquer all challenges, hurdles, and strife. Believe in yourself is what they all say. Your grit, guts, and courage will ultimately pave the way for the path you'll leave for others to follow. Your destiny will manifest a brighter tomorrow. So that's the book. And at the end, I have a picture of each woman. I have their photograph next to their illustration with their location and their website address. So you, all the people who read the book can go check out their companies online. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. I truly enjoyed it. Boss Wooded. Oh my gosh. I'm like, this is not just something that is inspirational to our young girls. It's inspirational to grown women like me, you know. I, of course, there are some that I, I was aware of, and but there are some that I wasn't aware of. So this is definitely a great education and a great inspiration. So uh, Ms. Gwen, could you let us know exactly why you chose to write this book and why these seven women? Okay, good question. Um, I have 13 books total, including this one. This is my latest okay. book. And I'm a longtime entrepreneur myself. I have uh, uh, four other children's books that are about business. So my heart is to teach children that they can go, uh, be entrepreneurs and go into business for themselves. Yeah. But I wanted them to be able to relate to the people who are in business. And there's just nothing about women in business, black women in business on a children's level. Yeah. I didn't want to focus on Oprah or uh, Kathy Hughes, which most people know, everybody knows Oprah and Kathy Hughes was radio one and TV one. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to focus on women who had passed on because I wanted the women to be relatable. Yes. I also wanted to have different industries and generations represented. So, the, you know, the oldest woman in here started her business in 1978, but then yeah. two of the women are young. They're in their 20s or 30s there. So uh -huh. I wanted people to be able to see themselves in these women. And so I decided on seven because seven is the number of completion. And um, that was how I came up with seven. It wasn't, uh, I started off with a list of about 15 people. Uh -huh. I, I narrowed it down. I wanted women who had started their own business from the ground up. So some of them got eliminated because they either inherited their businesses yeah. or they, they bought a business that was already established. 
Yes. So yeah, I wanted people who had started from the ground. So that's how Boss Women was created. And I had to find an illustrator once I determined who was going to be in the book. And I wanted um, a black illustrator just because a lot of times people don't get the features right when they yes. do illustrations of us. Yeah. And I found two people. I had them do one illustration and I said, whoever does the best job with this first one. The first one that I had them do was the one at the woman at the very top. Okay. JC side. That was that was spot on. Yeah. So the one the person who did absolutely beautiful with yeah. that one was a female. It was a black woman named Stacy yeah. Creekmore. And so that's how I ended up um, having her as an illustrator. And it took several months to get the illustrations just right. Uh -huh. And then we had to decide how we were going to position them on the cover. You know, you have to decide. And when you have absolutely. more than one person, you have to decide where they're going to go. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, at first, we tried three and four, you know, because it's seven. But it uh -huh. looked too much together. So yeah. I said, let's try a pyramid. Let's try one at the top. And so since well, JC's face was narrow, uh -huh. she, you know, that's why she ended up at the top. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Yes. Gwen Richardson, boss woman. Because you picked everything and you need you wanted to make sure that everything was exact. And, you know, especially with um, our young girls being able to see this, this is a blueprint. You know, I'm like, yes, we, we hear so much about Oprah. We hear so much about Kathy Hughes and they are wonderful women. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? There are other women and especially, I, I think this is, kind of like the entrepreneurial age the past I would say the past 10 years has been the you know an entrepreneurial age especially for women and especially for black women and I think it is very good for our young girls to learn about these women you know about um the the creator of Camille Rose I know Camille Rose <laughs> I, you know, I use her products, you know, <laughs> and I know there are some young girls where, you know, their mothers are having them use Camille Rose products. It's good for them to see where she came from and how she developed this. And I am so glad that, you know, the way that you wrote it, it everything was thought out. It was not just, you didn't just slap this together. This was not no, just, yes. But you know, this is my first time ever in my life doing poetry, rhyming. Ever. Oh, wow. I have written, I have been writing since I was four years old. I've never done poetry. So wow. this was my first time, but I know with children, rhyming is easier for them yeah. to pick it up and catch it. And a lot of the words are big, but that will help them stretch their vocabulary. Exactly. And what I hear from adults, adult women like yourself, it inspires adult women <laughs> yes, to absolutely. You know, achieve their goals. So um, I have adult women buying it for themselves, you know. Yes. Um, and now I the book. Like, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, yes, I will allow my boys to read it. But, you know, this is mine. <laughs> and boys can gain something from it, too. Um, exactly. Yeah, the book is in hardcover now, so you have the paperback, but it yes. came out in hardcover in um, uh, October, so okay. uh, the hardcover, I have a copy of the hardcover, but. All right, uh, that's um, wonderful, yeah. and like you said, yes, it is very important for boys to read this book as well, just as we have all of, you know, these books that we promote for diversity that are not just, like, they're not just for, okay, if you see a uh, uh, African American or um, person of color on the cover, it's not just for that person. It's Correct. for it's for everyone, so that right. you can recognize and know. Um, you know, like like I said, you know, for Black History, uh, actually last week we had a book about a um, a young girl who wants to be a scientist and her brother was telling her, no, you can't until she rattled off a list of 
black women who were inventors and scientists. So yes, absolutely, you know, and I, I know sometimes, I'm like, even with my boys, they'll come and say, oh, a woman can't do that. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> so yes, yes, we will be reading this book to see the contribution that women and Black women have mm-hmm. given to society. So I I am just, I'm excited about this book. I'm elated. Um, but so, okay, so... Let's go on with a little bit. So, okay, so we know that you said that you have several other books that you've written, and um, this is a part of a series. No, this correct? one isn't. This okay. one is no, okay. this is a standalone book. Oh, okay, uh, my good. other books are uh, I, my series is called Kids Bids, okay. and that's is three neighborhood kids who um, earn money for things they want. So it teaches children to be entrepreneurial, to earn money for things that they want instead of, you know, always expecting their parents to give them money. And so in each book, they they do something different to earn money, but they work together. And it's it's one boy and two girls. And so uh, I have four books in that series and I will continue that one. But this one is this, and those were written right before so those four books were written right before I decided to do this project. And I okay. will be doing, a, and so that one has boys and girls in it, but I will be doing a similar project like this with men in it. Okay. I, you know, because I have some men, so well, what about men? Okay. Mm-hmm, so, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I haven't started writing it yet, but it's something that probably come out late, the latter part of next year. And, um, okay. You know, because I want every everybody to be able to see themselves in books. But you know what? You can see yourself in a book no matter who is written by. Because, yeah. and, you know, for many years, all the motivational books just about were not written by us. So, exactly. you, know, yeah. you know, and people still have to, to get that. Yes, but, you, you know, still it, get the message. Exactly. But it's, it's very, it's so important for especially our kids to see. Right themselves in the books it so is. were there any books that maybe you grew up with that was able to motivate you to either be an author or to you know aspire to be more well I was fortunate in that I had great parents mm. and my my dad was a pastor but he was also an entrepreneur our church when I was growing up was a large church. It wasn't a mega church. They didn't have mega churches then, Um, (laughs) but it was a growing church in the community where I grew up. Um, The church had a daycare center and it had a a home for the elderly. It was, my my dad was very progressive. He was very forward thinking, but we all had to work. (laughs) We worked at the daycare or the home and we got minimum wage, but we learned about business. We learned, uh, you know, my dad would come home and talk about employees, you know, he was having problems with, or, well, you know, he was talking about things related to being in business. So when I was, I was a little girl doing business type things, like when we would play store, uh, I would always be running the store. So I, I just, it was just in me. Oh, and the well, writing <laughs> the writing was too. So when I was 15, I knew I wanted to be in business. And mm-hmm. so I started, you know, shortly after college. I but it was always my mission. And I have been self-employed for 35 years. Oh, that I is not, I have not collected a paycheck from a third party in 35 years. That's I'm, amazing. Yeah. So I if it's about business, I know about it. I've seen <laughs> just about everything. So this was a topic I really could discuss. My challenge was challenging myself with the rhyming and the poetry. Yes. But, well, but you definitely line. you definitely did that. And I am just so inspired by this book. I know our friends will be inspired. Their parents, parents, if you're listening, go and find all the books in uh in the description below and you can definitely 
be inspired, inspire your children and help our children to have that entrepreneurial spirit that will take them a long way. So Miss Gwen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this, like I said, this is just so inspiring and you are so inspiring. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really, this is my first time doing something like this. And so this is paving the way for some other things. And actually I have quite a bit planned for 2022. So, um, but this is my first um, time doing something like this with the reading and it's exciting. So I'm um, thank you for the opportunity and, and kudos to you for being innovative and coming up with you know, fresh ideas are fresh. That's what, yeah. And I just love it when people do something different and you know creative and push themselves. And it's something that can help people. And you can build a foundation from it too. Yeah. And I absolutely. love your tutu and your outfit and your back. That's really cute. You know, you you really went out of the box with your themes, and I, it's, I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And that means so, so much coming from you. Thank you. Thank you again. Well, friends, we've come to the end of another Read with Carolee show, but make sure you hit subscribe and you ring that bell because we have wonderful authors coming your way every Saturday and you don't want to miss not one. So... Until next time, remember to grab a book and read. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.